boom, 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 boom. Oh, sorry, this song is so upbeat. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to more Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver. Last time we explored Route 47 and 48 to get to the Safari Zone. We're at the Safari Zone gate right now, though. First of all, we're gonna check out these markets real quick. Uh, some of them have stuff. Just a minute. Welcome. What do you need? She just got her so shop set up because, well, it just got up. Over here, you can buy some dust quick and net balls. Very useful. Net balls work well on weaker Pokemon in the wild. It caps out at level 30. Quick ball. Uh, the sooner you use it in a wild encounter, Pokemon, uh, Pokeball, or just wild encounter. I don't know why I was going with there. Just Pokeball fight. Uh, the uh, better it is. First turn usage is the best. We're gonna buy some of those. Dusk ball at night or in caves. It'll increase to about the rate of an Ultra Ball. So we're or better, I believe. So we're gonna get some of those definitely. Here you are, thank you, you put away the dust balls. And yeah, she has some pretty cool stuff. Might as well check it out. And going over here onto the right. I've decided to carry Pokemon drinks. This will be new to move, but I'll do my best. Welcome, what do you need? We have the protein and like all of the vitamins, all that stuff in here if you ever want to buy stuff like that. Uh, for me personally, I'll just, I'll just wait till I pick them up. They're kind of expensive and I'm only at 14,000 because I just wasted all my money. Safari Safari, it is so much fun. Safari Safari, so interesting, huh? So many Pokemon are waiting for us. That's a song I made up. I sing it when I'm in the Safari Zone. Uh, any markets over here? No, there is not. Okay, what does the lady with the con Kangaskhan have to do? I, she's not a talker. Okay, I guess we've checked out the two markets that you can do something. Sorry, you look like Boba. Oh, I did not mean to talk to you again. Because you are not. He is going to be in the Safari Zone. Hi, I have been waiting for you. What do you think? This is a brand new Safari Zone. By the way, I just had an idea. Would you like to take the owner aptitude test? Yes, please do this. It, it'll, it'll just be a little a little, uh, little test. Do a little side quest while we're here. Right on, let me explain how the test works. It's very easy. All I have to do is catch one Geodude at the Safari and show it to me. They are in the grass closest to the entrance. It shouldn't take long before you catch one. Good luck. We're going to be doing something longer than that. Uh, over here is Co-op Safari Zone. Uh, th this is where the swarm encounters come in. Uh, and just post-game, but we're not in post-game yet. So what you want to do is that you're just going to go up to this guy. Over to the Safari Zone. Just 500. You can play a Safari game. You still have to pay. And we're under 14,000 now. 30 Safari Balls. Uh, just like every other game, like uh, Pokemon Fire Red and Emerald and all that, you uh, get 30 Safari Balls, and you just basically run around this entry. What is unlike the other Safari Zones is that there's no longer a time limit or a step counter. Very problematic. Instead, the only way you can leave is just by retiring. Now, there, this zone is actually very, very complicated, I'm not gonna lie. This is probably the most complex the Safari Zone has ever been, which is why you want to take the aptitude test so you can unlock, unlock all that complexity. When you start... There are only six zones available to you out of a possible ten. That means you're going to be missing out four of them. One of them is guaranteed uh, to be on there all the time. Peak. So technically you only have five. And hey, there's a magnet right here. Might as well catch it. The Safari Zone works as usual. Uh, you'll get 30 balls, like I said, and there's there'll be the six areas. You have throw a Safari Ball, throw bait, and run away, and throw mud. Throwing bait makes a Pokemon less likely to run, but harder to catch, while throwing mud does the reverse, making it easier to catch, but more likely to run. So there's that for you. That's basically just the mechanics, and oh boy, there are a lot of Pokemon. Might as well just try and catch one. Okay, so this Magnemite is taking forever. I just wanted to catch a Magnemite. I didn't want to use it or anything. But we're just here. We're just going to try and catch a Geodude. Now, what you will be watching is... Uh, a bunch of bios. There are so many flipping Pokemon. The zones that I will be talking about, there are different Pokemon in different zones, and so whenever I'm talking about a specific zone, I will put the bios up, and I will also be putting up their zone in the corner. So, uh, yeah, there is a lot of things to do. You will get a uh, customization later on, but that is a Graveler, not a Geodude. But let's get on with these encounters because there's a lot. Starting with the zone we are in right now, the Peak Zone. Starting up, Magneton. The Evolved Magnemite is here. A great electric type Pokemon that has a lot of resistances thanks to its steel type. A solid pickup if you want a special attacker on your team. Wobbuffet has got to be one of the weirdest Pokemon play-wise. Only way that it can attack is counter. Massive HP stat for stalling and maybe putting out a Destiny Bond thanks to Shadow Tag, making it so that opponents can't escape. It's definitely a gimmick Pokemon, but also at the same time slows the game down so much, there's nothing you can really do with it. 
The Destiny Bond gimmick is one that also takes itself out, so it's only the only time it's useful is when you're dealing with something that can possibly wipe your team and you need to sacrifice yourself. Other than that, it's kind of a waste of a slot. That is all the Pokemon in the peak area, moving on to the desert area, is Sand Slash, an outclassed pure ground type that requires to be set up around and to, uh, to take advantage of its full abilities. To be honest, it's not worth setting up around either. Uh, find a different ground type if you want to be happy. That other ground type could be Cubone. It focuses on trying to be a tank, which at some points it does work. Ground is a really good tanking type, but not really whenever putting up something against uh, that it's weak to. Both of its ability benefit the tankiness. No recoil is a massive upside, as well as the great switch ability with Lightning Rod. Or you could go straight for the evolution and Marowak. Once again, everything I said about Cubone applies to Marowak. Great abilities to complement what it's trying to do. Next up is Smeargle. This is another very weird Pokemon, known for its signature move called Sketch. This move permanently copies the last move used by the opponent, which means that it can legitimately learn any move in existence except for two moves, Chatter and Struggle, which, I mean, technically you can learn Struggle because you just gotta waste its move slot, but whatever. And Shadow moves, but we aren't playing Colosseum or Gale of Darkness, so that doesn't matter. As a result of this, it can pass on any egg move to the Pokemon in the field egg group, which is super useful for those into breeding. In battle, it's very terrible though. Moving on to the next zone, the meadow area, you can find a Clefairy. Clefairy will grow up to be a special tank if you wait until level 43 to evolve it. You will be rewarded with Meteor Mash, a physical steel type move that has a 20% chance of boosting your attack. It's not required, but it's really a great move. Clefairy is also one of the best return users because of how high its friendship is upon catching it, having almost max power instantly. Just like every other normal type, it has a lot of move diversity. Clefairy surprisingly grows up to be a very fun Pokemon and I'd recommend trying it, especially in this generation. The baby Pokemon, Cleffa, doesn't have many good egg moves. The best one here would probably be Amnesia, a great stat buffing move, but other than that, Clefairy will be your go-to. Next up is Jigglypuff. I can't recommend as much. Boasting an amazing HP stat is cool and all, but has nothing with its, within its arsenal to capitalize upon except putting you to sleep. Wigglytuff doesn't get any better, well, except for that HP is buff, uh, buffness, but that's not one I can recommend. I just go with Clefairy. Igglybuff. To make matters worse, let's talk about this thing, and it's terrible egg moves. Covet, Faint Attack, Fake Tears, Gravity, Last Resort, Parasong, Present, and Wish. None of these are beyond okay and considered to be a good move on a Wigglytuff in your main journey. They are very just off-putting and weird moves. Skip Bloom. So you didn't want to deal with Splash. Alright, well, you aren't getting much here anyways. Although Grass Flying is a cool type, Skip Bloom is just so bad defensively that it's guaranteed to get one shot whenever you send it out, and it doesn't get to do much. Ooh, I am talking a lot here. In the forest area, you can find a Haunter. The Evolved Ghastly is found at night, and only at night. Trade immediately to get a special attacking Destroyer of Worlds. Getting use out of Shadow Ball thanks to its physical special split makes this all the more worth it in a great slot into many teams. Next up is Mr. Mime, a great psychic type if you can't find anybody to trade with for Abra, a great replacement. A special wall with lots of special attacking power to back it up, and great speed as well. Filter is definitely an interesting ability, helping the fact that psychic types have few weaknesses to those not very powerful types, except for some dark type moves and shadow ball, but those are pretty uncommonly seen. You'll be doing great using this Pokemon. And a Pokemon I just caught, if you're paying attention, Miss Drevis, the only new ghost type in Johto. And it blows. If you have Heart Gold Soul Silver, you have access to its evolution post game, uh, which makes it better? Talking about just Miss Drevis alone, I want to tell you it's good, but with those middle aligned stats, it can't be useful. It learns so many useful and unique moves for a ghost type, but can't take advantage of any of it. The move coverage is insane, but you're most likely going to need to use the non-attacking moves like Pain Split, Perish Song, or Confuse Ray to actually do anything useful before getting one shot. The Swamp Area. Hypno. The Evolved Drowsy can only be caught at night. Like I said, with Drowsy, in order to get full potential of Hypno, you'll need a move like Calm Mind to set up your sweep with. If you can do that, it's basically a tankier Alakazam. Murkrow. 
Just like Miss Drevis, Murkrow suffers from the fact that it has no evolution. Except for the post-game in Heart Gold Soul Silver. And I love Conchcar, one of my favorite Pokemon. Although I will give it credit where credit is due. Dark Flying type is a very interesting type at first glance. There are no weaknesses coming from the Dark type at all, and all of it coming from the Flying part. It's also a great offensive combo. Unfortunately, you will need some TMs for it to use any powerful moves. Not like it'll hit hard with them anyways. In the marshland is Arbok. The evolved Ekans can be found here. A pretty weird poison type Pokemon to make up for its lack of defense it has Intimidate, which is always a positive, but I feel like the poison type should be used defensively. That's what it's made for, which is the opposite of what Arbok tries to be. Poison only has a super effective advantage against Grass, even though Grass, even then, Grass has an absurd amount of weaknesses, so there's a super high chance you have a better way of dealing with them. I guess, if anything, it can learn Rock Slide and Earthquake, but I guarantee you'll want to put that on a different Pokemon anyways. Grimer, a special wall if you need one. I personally prefer Weezing, but they, but just know that there's nothing wrong with Grimer. After all, you could always just minimize spam and Toxic. Be word like that if you want. Well, speaking of Weezing, a great defensive wall if you need one. Can stand up to a lot of hits. Great, just a great Pokemon to poison anything you're having problems with, and just solid all around and gets rid of a weakness with its levitate ability. If you ever want to have too much fun, Explosion's always a fun move as well. Poliwag! Find, found only through surfing and fishing is Poliwag, a great mixed attacker that will eventually gain a fighting type if evolved into Poliwrath. I do not recommend Politoed whatsoever. Its main use comes from setting up weather, and that's only very useful on like online and double teams. Not very commonly seen on uh, single battles. I mean, I could be wrong. On top of being a great mixed attacker, it learns very powerful moves to support both sides along some great TMs for excellent coverage. A solid water and fighting type if you want one or both. In the mountain area, we have a Golbat. In order to achieve true happiness, you'll need max happiness to access Crobat. Eventually you become one of the fastest Pokemon and will 99% of the time be going first to deal reliable and fast damage. Or if you want a Toxic for good measure, it'll hit those guaranteed. With this high speed, it also becomes a great U-turn user in getting quick damage and switching out to a different member and can do consistently multiple times to mess with opponents. A solid pair pickup if you grind the haircuts, and hey, who doesn't love giving their Pokemon a haircut? Next up is Lickitung, a weird fella, I must say. Only in Heart Gold Soul Silver you can get its evolution. Now, the benefit to Lickitung is that it's pretty beefy, and alongside that, being a normal type. It learns some wacky moves for lots of type coverage. Unfortunately, with all that coverage comes little power, which is its weak point. I wouldn't say it's the worst option, it's just not a good one. Larvitar, a Pokemon with massive potential. The toughest part about this Pokemon is trying to get it to its final stage. But when you get there, you will be rewarded with an absolute powerhouse that summons a sandstorm upon entering. Being a dual threat in power and weather has got to be one of the most overwhelming things ever. Learning moot na- uh, I just lost myself up uh, for an opponent and this Pokemon has both in its arsenal. Naturally, learning moves like Earthquake, Stone Edge, Thrash, Crunch, this thing is a beast. When it comes- when it becomes a Tyranitar, it'll eventually turn into a Rock Dark type with low speed, which is the most hindering thing about it. A quad weakness to fighting and terrible speed leads to disaster, but if you can avoid that, you'll enjoy using this thing with utmost desire and destruction. The Rocky Beach Area. Slowbro. You can have an instant tank that'll deal with a lot of Pokemon. Water Psychic is also a great offensive type, getting stabbed for moves like Surf and Psychic, which is a great upside as well. Solid pick. Doduo. A pretty decent normal flying type. Tri-Attack is a super cool move that has a chance to either burn, paralyze, or freeze, which is a really cool side effect and gimmick for a move. This will probably be the best time to pick this Pokemon up if you don't do want to use a Doduo, though. Lapras. Found only through surfing is very rare, is Lapras. Lap Lapras is a great tank despite being water ice, which should be an accomplishment all on its own, but it even does more than that. Only resisting its own two types and still takes hits like it has no weakness. On top of that, it has great offensive capability with Ice Beam and Surf. You could also use it for like more fun moves like Confuse Rain and Perish Song. 
there's a lot of roles for Lapras that could easily suit your team. Poliwhirl. An evolved Poliwag. I wonder why you cannot find these in the same zone, but whatever. Everything I said about Poliwag applies here. All you need to know is that uh, you need a stone to evolve it. In the Wasteland area, you can find a Machoke. Get that trade off and you'll be set. If only speed wasn't such an issue, you'd be so much better. But nonetheless, it's got great offensive capability and some surprising bulk as well. Kangaskhan, another normal type that doesn't evolve. And once again, it's good enough that it doesn't need to. Kangaskhan has some great bulk to withstand hits and deal great physical damage back towards the opponent. For its move coverage, it requires a lot of TMs. One of the best things I can say about Kangaskhan is how early it learns the move Outrage. A 120 physical power dragon type move that'll encore itself two to three times and get more powerful each time. At the end of the encore, it'll confuse itself, but it deals so much damage that it's barely an issue. What's also pretty nice is that even if you don't want it as a team member, Kangaskhan can learn six HMs, including Surf and Whirlpool, Whirlpool, a very useful Pokemon on both sides of the coin. I swear we are almost done. The Savannah area. First up, Nidorina. A stone is all that's needed to evolve. This is the more tankier version of the two Nidos, if that's what you prefer. If not, you have Nidorino, is also here in the Savannah. The more offensively geared of the family. I personally prefer Nidoking, but that's just me. Both of them are really good. Rhyhorn. Easily the worst thing about this Pokemon is its stats and type. You have to deal with these garbage stats up until level 42. For reference in this game, that's about the same level as the first Elite Four member. You will be stuck with Team Fodder up until that point, and it doesn't even get that much better, Loki. In the Wetland, the final one, the final one, final area. Been through all 10. Psyduck, only found at night. A pretty box standard water type, eliminating weather effects is cool, but won't be seen a lot in the main journey. Or you could just go straight for the evolution, also only found at night, Golduck. Golduck is for some reason confused to be a Psychic type, and it's not. The reason why though is because it learned some good Psychic moves despite being pure Water type, which is always a bonus. And the last Pokemon you can find in the Safari Zone is Quagsire. The little fella decided to grow some arms. As mentioned with Wooper, you will be getting one of the greatest tanks in the game. Water Ground is one hell of a dual type that only has a weakness, one weakness, and it's Grass. On top of that, it's got great bulk and great abilities to complement its tankiness. We are finally done with all of those. And I already caught a Geodude, that was like the second Pokemon I caught. And we got away safely. Like I said, the only way to retire, we used only 13. Yes, we would like to exit the Safari Zone. Do, 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 do. Song so upbeat. Did you have fun? Please come again. All right, go to your little. But this can't be used. Okay, we can't use that PC. Yet. Uh, is there one over here? No, there isn't. Okay, we have to go back to the PC. Uh, go get that Geo Dude and show it to Boba. Oh, wonderful! You've caught a Geo Dude. You've passed the first test. Huh? Didn't I tell you that there are two tests? That's right. Becoming an owner is not that easy. The second test is well. I'm still preparing for it. I will let you know once it's ready. You just need to wait a little. I will call you with the Poke Gear. You have to wait three in-game hours for him to call you. It is quite ridiculous, but we will wait that three hours because, well, I am, uh... I want to get this done now. I don't want to come back. <laughs> Needless to say. We will be right back after I wait three hours. See, doesn't this route just look so beautiful when the sun is setting? It just looks amazing. I love this route so much. Alright, we have waited our three hours. He has called us for a new test. I've been waiting for you. The test is ready. This time you can catch a sand shrew and show it to me. Sounds easy, right? Not really. Sand shrew will not appear with the current safari zone setting. And that's where this comes in handy. This sophisticated high-tech machine lets you customize safari zone areas. I call it the arena customizer. You wanna know, you wanna know how it works, don't you? It's a secret. Well, you shouldn't have trouble operating it. Just talk to the staff next to me. I almost forgot. I was in the middle of explaining the second test, wasn't I? You will not see Sandshrew with the current Safari Zone areas, so you have to use the area customizer to change them. Sandshrew live in the desert. Good luck. 
This is the arena area customers are what do I like to know. So basically this is what this is how you unlock the squares that you do not have. We're just gonna go over here, has six areas, planes, peak, and so on. I already went through all 10 of them. Area customizer allows you to change the combination of the areas. What would you like to know? Using it. I, the guy didn't explain it. Check out the machine and you'll see the area customizer screen. The lower window shows the current settings. Select an area with a button to swap it with another. Let's go over swapping. Then select swap. You will see 12 new areas. One of them by pre uh, Select one of them by highlighting it and pressing the A button. And then switching it. Then select, uh, when you select an area, then select order. The area type will not change, but the location of cannot be changed. And appearing Pokemon. Different areas have different Pokemon living in them, so when you change areas, you will see different Pokemon. Please do try the different areas. I did not mean to click that. Alright, so let's go into this machine. We need the desert. We gotta turn it on. So, uh, what you wanna do is that you will have it. We have marshland, wetland, meadow, forest, peak, and swamp. I'm gonna go switch. We peek out for the... We have... Do I have to click it? No way I have to click it. I do. <laughs> the desert. There we go. Very last one. And we can get out of there real quick, and we're gonna have to go spend more money. Safari Zone areas have been swapped. Welcome to the Safari Zone. Yes. I would love to play. This is how we can get every single Pokemon in this area is by swapping this. Is Honestly, I love this idea. Customizing your own Safari Zone, so if you need certain Pokemon, you can just customize the areas that you want and keep the ones that you don't want. And it honestly just adds for a whole lot of customization. And I really wish it was a feature brought back for the future for Safari Zones. As you can see, what used to be a, a peak is now a desert, and we'll just go back to Safari Zone hunting. Because all we need is a sand tr That's a sand slash. I do not need a sand slash. Really wish it was a sand trick. Hey, there's our sand tree that we need. A uh, ball it? I feel like I just use a ball on it and just get it first try. That'd be cool if I did. One, two, three, catch. Yes, there we go. We got our sand tree. And you know what? Honestly, let's, let's name it an honor of Boba. We're going to name it Boba. All caps, because I really don't care. I also just realized you're a woman. <laughs> so, oopsies. And retire. I left the first slot open. Oh, does it go straight to my PC? No, it just goes down to the bottom. Okay, whatever. You did it! You caught a Santru. I knew you could do it. You've passed the test. You are now the Safari Zone owner. So I, I just own this thing now. I've always wanted to see young people playing at the Safari. I thought I might get some new ideas. That should help you complete your Pokedex. That's what I've been thinking. By the way, though... By the way, though you are now the uh, Safari Zone owner, would you kindly continue to pay admission? We have our reasons. Don't be upset. I'll keep thinking about how I can create new fun ways to help you complete your Pokedex. Now go have fun with the Safari Zone. We are now the Safari Zone owners. And I gotta say, it's quite the good explanation of helping people out with their Pokedex. And Gold, Silver, Crystal, a lot of the Pokemon in here you can't even find until like the post game or in Kanto. Pokemon such as like Larvitar you can't find until like the last mountain in the game. Miss Dreavus isn't available until like way later. It's like, and so putting those Pokemon in the Safari Zone, while maybe just kind of like, I don't know, it seems like a last ditch effort, it's honestly a very good move on their part to add more of the Johto Pokemon in there. Uh, those are all the Pokemon that I caught while I was in here. And with that, that is everything in the Safari Zone that we can do. I forgot my Pokemon in there, but no, it doesn't really matter. We are done with the Safari Zone, and that is all the things you need to do in here. We don't have the HMs to go uh, scale the waterfalls yet, but we do have Surf. And we can go get Strength without doing anything new. So next time on Pokemon Heart Gold Soul Silver, we're gonna go get Strength. We're gonna go across to all of Johto, seeing what all the new areas we have unlocked with Surf will be. See you guys then, because trust me, there are a lot of areas you want to go and backtrack for, and a lot of very good items and levels. See you guys then.